Figma has a lot of prototyping transition options, each useful in its own way, but it can be hard to understand what they're specifically for. Let's dive into how and when you should use each one. So here we are in Figma and we're in the design mode right now. And when we go ahead and click over to the prototyping mode, we get all of these noodles, we get all of these transition options here. By default, transitions are set to instant. And we have other options like dissolve, smart animate, move in, out, push, slide in, and slide out. So let me show you what each one of those transitions looks like, and then we'll dive in a little deeper. This is instant, this is dissolve, move in, move out, push, slide in, slide out. And that's it. So the question is, when should we use each one? Now let's dive in starting with instant. Instant is a really great transition for when we don't need any animation to take place. That is really applicable for things like buttons, when we are toggling things on or off, even when we are selecting things. So maybe this could be an object or an image in a gallery. Instant works really well for these use cases. Dissolve also can work here. Right now this is set to 300 milliseconds, which is a bit long for like a toggle or a select, uh, but it's really just for illustrative purposes at this point. But dissolve can be nice if you don't want that abrupt instant transition, and you kind of want to cross fade and ease into the selected state. All these transition states and animations are really helpful in communicating the predetermined UX mental model. And what is a mental model? It is simply the way that we are organizing all of these different places in this digital space. And we want to communicate to our user the home screen is over here, the setting screen is over here, and if we're moving back and forth, you know where it's going and how to get back to it. And animation can really help reinforce that already established mental model. So the move in and out transition is really helpful for showing a progression or regression into and out of a specific space. How that's happening is that we are seeing our current screen stay in place as we are piling on top of it other layers and other layers and other layers. So maybe this is going deeper into a folder, like in a Google Drive type of situation, or going deeper into different settings. This is really helpful for communicating those things. And a great way to think about this is just like physical pieces of papers being stacked on top of each other. We know that whatever we just stacked on top of still exists there somewhere in the stack. We just have to go back in order to find it. Next is slide in and slide out. And it's very similar to the move in and move out, but you see that there's a slight bit of motion in the primary in the starting screen where we see it kind of fade out there's a little bit of a where we start seeing it move slightly in the in the direction that the new screen is coming into and there's a slight scrim or darkening of that screen happening as well this could communicate similar things of progression and regression going deeper into a folder or coming out of a folder um, it also maybe could communicate that hey this bottom layer that you just started on maybe it's like temporarily disabled maybe it's temporarily dismissed for a while because you can see that there's a slight motion there. But in most cases, it's more of a stylistic preference of do you want to do the move in, move out, or slide in, slide out. And last, we have push. And push is really helpful in communicating the mental model when we're navigating between spaces of equal importance. Everything's on the same layer. There's no stacking or unstacking. And a really helpful use case for this and a typical use case for the push transition is when we're doing tabbed navigation. And so here we're on A screen, we can switch to B and C. And this animation helps reinforce that we know, hey, A is all the way over here and C is all the way over here. We know where those screens are going to live based off of this transition of things moving back and forth. And so it really helps communicate to the user what that overall mental model is so that they can more easily grasp how things are organized in the specific experience. And the one thing about doing the push transition in Figma is that you have to enable animate matching layers in order to make the tab navigation effect look correct. If I go ahead and disable animate matching layers, and let's go preview that. So you see what's happening now when we don't have auto animate matching layers is that the entire screen with its tabs are all moving. So the effect is not convincing that these tabs actually should be a layer on top while we're moving with screens behind it. The way that we set that up is making sure that this layer and this layer and this layer are all named the same. And you can see that there's this little blue highlight and you can see that I'm naming it tabs over here and tabs right here. If I change this to something else, 
you can see once I do that, I have a blue highlight on A and C, but no blue highlight on B because the name is not the same. The name has to be the same and also the groups inside need to be similar because if I actually click into B, you can see that it highlights this and this over here and it knows, hey, these are identical layers because of the name, the shape, the color, all of those sorts of things. And we have to set that up first in order to make sure that Smart Animate works properly. So if I go ahead and name this tabs, we can see that now it's back to being highlighted. And if we go ahead and enable matching layers again, it works as we intend it to. The other transition we did not dive into is Smart Animate. Smart Animate is a very robust transition property, which we'll dive into in a later video. So now picking out a transition in Figma should be much easier knowing what each does and what they are useful for. Catch y'all next time.